There's a stapler there. She was going to try and join, so okay, it should be. Got it mostly done. I just need to brush up a little bit about the study guide. Um, and then that gives us basically we have three weeks, full weeks of class this week, next week, and the week after, and then we have a Monday class. So and then that's it. There's no final. Okay, so you've got test on Wednesday, and then one more test that's going to be online. Anatomy and physiology type stuff. So. Oh, so we're so we'll be done before life break. The only thing we'll lack is a presentation of our topic. Okay. Which we'll do that during our regularly scheduled filing. And that's just gonna be a poster to project. We'll, I'm gonna have the labs opened up and we'll have a poster projected and you guys will go around and write each other posters and see what we'll see what everyone did. And that will be the last big thing. Okay. Um, so I, I'm whole. I I do. You you guys have to believe when I said try not to backlog everything. Like everyone can do at the end. Mm -hmm. um, but I think a lot of the stuff we do. I guess there's a, one more um, progress report. Um, but you've got the uh, annotated bibliography done. The spreadsheet exercise is due coming up soon. In the um, and that, that's not a huge sign. Yes, yeah, so I'll see the video for how to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, you want us to just do it and then give our like explanation of like what it means, basically? Yeah, I would like the p value. You know, just give me some context for what that is. Okay. Um, and um, yeah, the second lab practical is going to be all pictures. It's going to be birds. It's going to be mammals. Birds, common name, and order. And the mammals will be Latin names and order. Okay, just like on the sheet here. Um, I've got some specimens out. Honestly, more just. FYI, just so you can see, see these different. Um, a lot of these species are ones that we are learning in here. Bird, 
it's a jump goal, we don't have that, but like um, Wax, Wang, or Ram. Um, so those are just out because they're dyed and we've got them in there, so I'm not going to pull them out. Um, today we'll go through the pictures for the um, mammal presentation. I'd say probably the mammals, besides the Latin names, most of these things, I'd say a, a good bulk of these things are familiar to you. It's animals that you've seen before, you've thought about. Uh, so a lot of it is re remembering the, the scientific name and the order. Okay. So I'll try to give you little tips about remembering them. Um, of course, this is our one marsupial, marsupialia, the order. Um, Didelphus. Di means two, delphus means womb. So uh, possums have a forked penis and a, a, a forked vagina. And I think they, I'm pretty sure that they always give birth. No, no, they don't give birth to twins because they give birth to multiple. It's um, nine banded armadillos always give birth to quadruples. Yeah, I don't know why. Why do they have a, why is it forked? Great question. Great question, one that I do not know the answer to. Let's let's go to Google. So that that just helps you to remember um, why do possums why do possums die? Hey, um, think stink, freeze, nope, have a forked penis. I'm pretty sure they do. Maybe I'm yeah, forked penis correlated with a structure. And so again, didelphus means two wombs. Um, how do possums mate? So, I guess they have a shadow. I guess it's like a greater chance to get, you know, like to reproduce. Because if there's, it's, I mean, two chances are better than one. I don't know. Yeah, but, but okay, so say they have two wombs. Then how many fallopian tubes do they have? Four. That's what I was. How many ovaries that's, that they have? That's what I was wondering. Is it, is it just the same, but males just go hit? It just branches tubes? earlier, as opposed to being one uterus. It's two different uter uteri. I don't know. Honestly, uh, that's one of those. It, it, I I think that there's sometimes it's just a just like a some kind of mutational mistake, and it may not even have an adaptive function. Um, but suffice to say, I guess the bigger point here is just how are you going to remember the name Didelphus? Just remember uh, that they have two wombs. Okay. Um, and if you, if anybody misidentifies this on the um, second line of high school, then you say just like summarily. It's written in the syllabus. You guys probably didn't see that part. Um, but yeah, it'll make it a lot easier for me. I didn't have to grade your poster because you just failed the whole class. And actually, you get removed from the Reinhardt University. So, <laughs> um, no more biology. You can never say the word biology again. Okay. Um, how about this guy? Oh, man. I think I think I have a rat on tail. I think it's big ego. Now, we have, I think we probably just have one species of mole, and that's the eastern mole. But if you go north of here in the mountains, we have star nose mole. Um, we have the uh, frog. Do you have star nose moles? The ones that have the big. Yeah, at Lou. Okay. Huh. That's interesting. They're all around our house. Our cat loves them. Yeah, no. Our dogs dig these things up. Um, I mean, so in this order, insect, insectivora, um, this is the shrews and the mole. Uh, and you'll see there's one shrew out here. Um, and you can kind of get an idea about the pelage or the that really short and very dense fur. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, I've got a, bo a mole at home I'll bring in. Um, all the moles and shrews all have the same kind of fur. It's really short and dense, real soft. Um, let me pass them down to that. They were bigger. They were targeted so bad. 
For fur. Oh, for the fur? Yeah, yeah you're right. They still have fur. But it's real soft. It's so nice. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. But shrews and moles look very similar, except the baby feet. Only found on moles. And that is on the um, Columbus, Columbus, is that one? Yeah. Um, I don't know why they're aquaticus, because they're not an aquatic animal. But to me, when I remember these things, I remember aquaticus is like it should be aquatic, but they're not. You know, it's like you can remember the offset type thing. <laughs> um, just like five line skinks have four. Um, and then we have this is one of our venomous mammals right here. Oh, wait, this is a comparison between the Scalopus and Volrhina. You see that pelage. This is the short tailed shrew. Southern short tailed shrew. Yeah, say that five times fast. And they are um, one of about five species of mammals in the world that are venomous. Um, short tree. And you can't, well, I guess the next picture should probably be a short tailed shrew, too. Yeah, this is a live one. Um, look at his eye. Yeah, look at his eye. Look very closely and you'll see his eye. Makes <laughs> sense because they are, they're not, they do not live necessarily underground most of the time, but they're in the here. Things coming in and out of the leaves, right? And um, so they use the venom to sort of, um, I guess you'd say, uh, paralyze their their prey. So they are, in, as indicated by the name, insectivora. They eat a lot of insects. They'll envenomate the little beetle, and then they'll just stash it in their little lair, and it stays alive so it doesn't rot. But then eventually they'll just come back and eat it. Super high metabolism. Um, shrews eat just constantly. Um, and so they're very, very active, um, kind of voracious predators. Very common animal. Um, another type of shrew, uh, and, and shrews are interesting because there's a lot of them that are um, only found in the northern part of the country, which doesn't make sense because they're so small. You'd think that would be cold for such a small animal. But um, I don't know. If they come down the mountains, how far they come down. Um, but we definitely have well, Roger Carolinensis and Sorex Londorostris. Shrews have been dealt with that and because if they stop eating, they pretty much die. Yeah, their metabolism just that's true. Off. So uh, I've done some work trapping these guys, and if you catch one of these little, or there's one that's called a picking shrew, and they're with a tail, they're like this tail. Mm -hmm. and you, you tear them open, but they'll just like cannibalize each other. Um, so uh, they're just, if you catch them in traps, they almost always die because you can't, they need to feed every couple of hours. Dang. I know. So definitely shrew-like for small tiny eyes, doesn't have the big beauty feet, but his tail is long relative to his body. They're a lot smaller than a um, glorina too. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, that other short tail shrew, the home campus. Yes. I found one a couple of years ago. It was dead. Yeah. <laughs> no questions. Cats, cats love to kill them, but they don't like to eat them. Yeah, no. I've never eaten them. Yeah, I think they just stink too bad. But look at this succession. Uh, they're really uh, this group Sorex are some of my favorite animals. Long tail, but they're small. Sorex and Androsis are probably like this big. Um, yeah, okay, I don't think you're going to confuse them. Long nose, but long tail. That will give you a Sorex. And the only one I'm making a response to for is long. Longia rostris. What are you getting from that? Longia rostris. Long tail. Close. Long. No. Ro like your rostrum. Is, would be the snout part. So you get this long snout on them. Okay, um, Chiroptera, very diverse group of, of mammals, the Chiroptera in the back. And we have probably, I would guess we probably have at least 10 species of that on campus. I just picked out some on A that you can see. 
and B, that we can actually identify. A lot of this group, like especially in this first one, Biotis, um, they're, you've got to be an expert to, to identify the Biotis. Um, and there's a couple that are endangered, so you can actually make pretty good money if you are that expert. Number one, you have to have your full rabies, that the course of vaccines to handle them, because they do carry rabies quite regularly, and you've got to be really skilled at identification. But these myotis, this is Lucy fugus. Lucy means light. See about Lucy in the sky with that. Lucy means light. Fugus, like a fugitive, means you flee from the light. So Lucy fugus means a, you know, like a cave dwelling animal. The little brown bat, little brown myotis. So again, um, if you are out there and you see a bat, the rules that you're learning for identification here only work relative to the other two bats that you need to know. Right? You find one that's brownish and little in the real world, it could be one of a whole bunch of different species. Right. But here we've got the little brown, the little brown bat, and then we have Lazierus borealis, red bats. And this is what they look like. It's like a beautiful orange, bright orange bat. We've caught these on camp. I had one time for a while, but had a, a guy come and we set up mist nets on that road behind the gym that goes up to the sewage treatment plant. We caught a red bat up there. Um, they have white on their, on their breast, that beautiful orange color on their back. Very common. Um, bird, yeah. Bird. Not a bird. I'm big one. Um, I believe that that's somebody's uh, figure holding them. So all told, their body length is probably like this, and their their um, by the wingspan is like that. They're very common in newt. They roost underneath the bark on trees and things like that. A lot of bats we think of they roost in um, caves, but a lot of them roost underneath bridges. A lot of them roost in trees. Um, I stepped on one of these one time, and my wife was trying to tell me that I had a bat on my shoe, and I was like, I was trying to really try to understand what she was telling me. She said, if you have a bat on your shoe, and I'm like, I have a bat on my shoe? She said, if you have a bat on your shoe, and I'm like, I have a bat on my shoe? She said, if you have a bat on your shoe, and I'm like, oh my god, I've got a bat on my shoe. It just made no sense. But they, can get, they get down in the leaf litter um, during the winter, there you go, that's another. The, 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 we have the hoary bat, the evening bat, and the red bat that are all in this last year. Beautiful. Awesome, man. Bats are so damn cool. It's like three-dimensional. Like, it just changes your whole idea of, like, habitat. Because I think of everything I've studied is, like, down on the forest floor, but all of a sudden, like, everything is in play, you know? The red bat, eastern red bat, another one picture of them. Mexican free-tailed bat. Um, here's your teeth. Tail is supposed to be on this membrane. Membrane between the rear legs. But see the myotis and the lasieris. The tail, or the membrane comes to the tip of the tail. Right. That membrane comes down to the tip of the tail. Not so on the Mexican free tailed bat. Can you get that? Oh, God, that's like that old. Yeah. yeah. Very strange. So, you guys have seen um, pictures or heard of this um, the bridge. In Austin, Texas, with bats. I love Google. It doesn't even matter. Every night, you can line up there and just see thousands, no, millions of bats stream out of this, this underneath this bridge. They go out over the agricultural fields come back and roost there during the daytime. These are all Mexican free-tailed bats. 
Hmm? Oh yeah, they eat so many insects. They eat so many insects over the river and over the field. They like it, yeah, so there's, there's a place too called Saudi Cave and over Gunnersville. Like, they like South Saudi? Yeah, so where 72 crosses um, Sato Cave. Yeah. yeah. Where, where, um, where 72 crosses over Gunnersville, like mm -hmm. going from Chattanooga to Huntsville. Yeah. I've been here to see this. This is just mind blowing. Uh, like one sees that it's kind of coming out. And it actually warms the air that's coming back. Like crapping on you. And up in this, uh, you haven't seen it not particularly well, but um, black rat snakes just sit up there and just just pick off these bats as they're flying out. Like, Is it what animal? The black rat snakes. It, it's really something to see, and they're um, on the top of myotis. Um, it's a uh, gray bat, so they would look most like the myotis lucifugus. So there's the Mexican retail bat. Bats are very difficult to study, though, because how do you get a bat in hand? You have to catch it. And then when you have them in hand, then you've got to worry about rabies. So um, they do make a, a, a um, technology called Anabat, and it's basically a high-frequency recording device. And you look at the sonograms of their, of their calls, and you can sort of discriminate. Which species based on this miracle? Which I, I really would love to do some of that work because that's um, a very interesting. And there, there's a lot of there's a disease that had gone around maybe four or five years ago called white tip syndrome, white nose, white nose syndrome. Somebody went to Europe, went caving, picked up this fungus on their shoes, came back to New York, walked into a cave, spread the fungus. Millions and millions of bats died. It's just a total, it's like coronavirus, it's a total novel virus. A fungus that bats in the United States had never been exposed to. The immune system was totally unprepared for it, and it just infected their lungs and um, killed them in their um, while they're overwintering. Okay. Everybody knows. Oh, wait, this is kind of out of order, though, isn't it? This is getting to the rodentia. Let me see if I can put these in order. <clears throat> Next should be what the non baby on the new wall. Well, so what comes after that? How many of these am I missing? Cottontails. And then they go to my motor. You, this is. Okay. Well, fiddlestick. Huh. Okay. Well, yes, I'll Google them and what I'll do is I'll update this um, with good pictures uh, and I'll put a new PowerPoint on to um, on to Canvas. My apologies. So this is a pretty interesting um, animal in that nine-banded armadillos were not something you'd see here in North Georgia until maybe over in like Floyd. I remember hunting over like in Cedar Town like probably like, ten years ago. You, you could see yeah. Pickens, Cherokee County. First ones I saw in Pickens were probably like four years ago, and the first ones I saw in Cherokee County were like this year, or maybe two years ago. I saw one this weekend. Yeah, now they're becoming pretty common. You it's literally, a, you literally wrote seriously, it's an armadillo <laughs> <laughs> on the sheet. Oh, like, so it's not Yeah, you were like seriously. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will put a picture up there. Just to show you. you know, I mean, I, 
I, I can make the assumption as I know what I'm a dildo. So, <laughs> you know. um, so when they have babies, they always have pools? I, I want to say that it's true, but I, I'm going to do um, so it's like just knowing the right way to ask the thing questions, right? Do armadillos do, do they carry um, leprosy? Yes, they do. Have claw droop? Yep. Uh, nearly always have litters of four babies identical to a quadruplet. Oh. Yep. Oh yeah, they can jump. They use this little pig thing, pig nose, to like dig into the um, soil. They do actually a lot of disturbance in the woods. Um, and they do carry leprosy. One of the only other mammals that carry leprosy. Okay, um, cottontail rabbit. They look like, um, do you guys know what rabbits look like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a them. Um, gray squirrels. Southern flying squirrels. We'll just look at them because you know, because they're cool. Well, I'm not going to show you gray squirrel. Southern flying glaucomies. Wow, freaking cool. These these live on campus too. Beautiful brownish color on the back. Yeah, a little more. You want you want one? They're oh, so nifty. I caught one over behind the healthcare center in my trash. And I think that we do have a specimen here. Pretty sure there's a flying squirrel specimen. Yeah, here he is. He's got big eyes, too. He they look like cotton. Yeah, they're pretty small. Um, Imagine so that having it on your shoulder. Yeah. They just jump off. You can get a sugar glider. You can get sugar gliders, which are, I want to say, sugar gliders are marsupials. This guy is definitely a placental animal, but not a marsupial. Um, and uh, so these guys are obviously cooler because they're named. Um, so, yeah, southern flying squirrel, there's northern flying squirrels. Glaucomis volans, these are Sabrina, I think, right? Glaucomis Sabrina, Sabrina. Um, and, no, glauco these are Glaucomis volans. Okay, Tamius striatus. Striatus means striped. So, the, like, okay, why do I have a picture of a chipmunk, but not a very scroll? Some kind of um, discrimination. <laughs> uh, yeah, Tamius striatus. Eastern chipmunk. The marmotum. This is our, our marmot. You guys know what marmots are? I don't know if you've traveled a lot out west. Marmot. Marmot. These are like mountain mammals. Those are the things that are yellow. Yes. <laughs> yep. You've probably seen videos of them right there. Right there. Well, this is our native eastern marmot. We got them here. Marmota monax. Don't have them here. Yeah. yeah. I see them every day when I go check my turtle traps. I yep. don't see a marmot. Now, I, I have a hypothesis that these guys are much more important than we think. Um, uh, it was probably 2010. I was out in front of the art building. There's a little nose of land goes out. There's a blue spruce and it goes down to the lake. And I was looking down in this marmot hole, and there was a baby pine snake in there, like this big. So I thought, wow, that is interesting. It was funny. It was weird because I was showing the student. He he was trying to get a letter of recommendation, and so I told him, well, yeah, if you would do something for me, then I'll do something for you. So then I was telling him, like, yeah, look down in these holes, and you might find one. And I looked down in there, and sure enough. So then I go back like two days later, and part of this, like, there was probably a system of burrows. There was another hole coming up. There were like five little baby sheds of pine snakes. So what that tells me is that definitely a pine snake went into an active 
wood truck pull up and laid eggs down in there. So then I started putting cameras on these things and all kinds of animals going in and out of these burrows. Possums, squirrels, different kind of rodents, snakes and things, probably turtles even. Like I was talking about gopher tortoises, how they dig these burrows that are used by so many other mammals. I really think that these guys are, think about it, who else digs giant burrows and a major bomb under there? It's a great place to get down under the feet and stuff, you know? Woodchucks. People call them whistle pigs because they do whistle pretty loudly. Marmota monax, okay? The largest, our largest rodent at least, um, Castor canadensis. You know, Casper oil used to come from this guy. Uh, I have one specimen. Of this one. Um, yeah, it's made in China. But it's American. It's confusing right now. Even even American beavers are made in China now. Um, huge fatty tail. Uh, these definitely occur on campus. They can get very, very big. I mean, the tail can be this big. I've seen beavers trapped on this campus that are like this big at least. Gigantic animals. Um, very cool. Ecosystem engineers. I think like humans and beavers are the animals that really change their landscape. You know, I mean, they flood massive amounts of, of areas. Um, so they can have a place to stay in the water in the winter when it freezes. Okay, um, more rodents. Rodentia is the biggest group of mammals. Chiropterans are probably next. Rodentia. This one is this Rattus norvegicus. This looks like a Norway rat to me, but it might not be. Let's see. Okay, yeah, no. Okay, these guys are confusing. This and this are native wood rats. Neotoma floridanus. Floridanus. Floridano. Neotoma floridano. Okay. Um, look at the long tail. And it's hairy. <clears throat> okay, that's one, one clue that it's not a Norway rat. Okay, I would never give you this picture. I don't like this picture. This is much better in, indicative of a uh, wood rat. These are native and they are we'll called pack rats. They'll build these big giant nests out of sticks and things. Um, they live like in rock outcrops and things. They live at the points in my big pile that he built for me. You get a lot of pictures of wood rats. Kind of a kind of, um, big native rat. So you can see here's a mama suckling her babies up inside of a rock outcrop. Okay. Paramiscus <clears throat> species, did I just say Lycopus? Yeah, white-footed mouse. <clears throat> very, very common. This genus, though, Paramiscus, has a whole bunch of species of Paramiscus. Maniculatus, Lycopus, Gossipinus, right? But the most common one is um, this guy, Lycopus. Right, so Paramiscus, Leuco means what? You know what, Leucocyte? What? Leukemia? What? Left. White? Yes, white. Yep. Look on me, white. And then foot is foot. White footed mouse. Paramiscus leucopus. See the um, furry tail, big eyes, big ears, two tone body. Very white, very dark on the top. Okay, there's another one of the most of the schools, the um, non-native house mouse. It's mostly brownish, not so distinctly two-toned. You can look at this one in the back. See, it's white and brown on the top. 
right? They, they're kind of either cute because they have big eyes and they have big ears. All right, this is Lucopus. Another Lucopus. White footed mouse. White footed mouse. Again, I can't, I couldn't tell you. This is part of, I've been doing this research with those, um, the uh, piles at Dr. Bunch, and I put the traps with the camera, and we, we did that from most of the pictures that you guys went through were paramorphous. And the little rodents going through. It's impossible to, to identify them down to species, but so for, but here my goal for you is not to be able to go out and identify any small mammal you find, but to know the, the big highlights. Like you can say, that's probably some kind of paramiscus. And if it's a paramiscus, it's probably leucopus, because that's very common. Okay, to get really get down to species identification, you gotta look at skulls and DNA, all kinds of stuff. Okay, now compare that wood rat, the neotoma, to our non native lower leg rat, Atlas mosaicus. Um, that's the rat. So, what about what's a rat like? Though, what, what is it? What's the quintessential tail? Okay, more more naked tail. It almost looks like a like a snake. Yeah. The um, tail, yeah, because it has a little scale on the side. Um, that's like they're big, but they're actually no bigger than the, those wood rats are like this big. So this picture is a little bit close. Very fat. Um, grizzled, I think the, the um, if you notice, it, it, this kind of gives a general impression of kind of dirty, but what it is is we've got brown hairs, black hairs, lightish colored hairs, so the, the overall appearance of the um, fur is not so monotone, nice brown color. Okay. It looks, we call, I call this like grizzled. Um, and so this is a Norway rat. Have you ever seen a wolf rat? No. We used to have a lot of those in our uh, chicken houses. Okay. Wolf or wharf rats, maybe? Yeah, I no. think they're all this. They're just, they're huge. People yeah. call, I think that, you know, people call them roof rats or wharf rats, um, but I think they're all Norway rats. Again, another Norway rat, just because they're they're cool. I mean, they're really smart and they're neat and adaptable and everything. They're very geologically dreaming. And I think the ears are a little bit smaller. Think about what makes things look cute. Big eyes, big ears. Right. Compare that. To, yeah, to this guy. Or this guy. They just look more friendly and happy. This guy, I, I don't really like this picture because Again, that, I could see that being a Norway or wood bat. Okay, so this should be, um, yeah, no, house mouse. Okay, so I, I kind of think about them and to kind of draw this out. Then I would say furry tail. Body, big cute ears, big cute eyes, and then if you have a small version, furry tail. That would be the big one. Would be a wood rat. A small version of the same thing, furry tail, and two tone, like dark. And light on the bottom. The two, the small version of this would be paramescus. Big eyes, two tone. This would be the deer, uh, white, light foot, uh, white footed mouse. I'm just going to put parallel next to this. And then the, over here, you got this sort of naked tail, beady eyed. The small ears, and then you got the smaller version of that would be the house mouse, or most 
of humans. Fear of madness. Even fear of the name sound. I think that this kind of looks like a little honey. It's a little cuter in that his ears are definitely bigger than a rat's. But see that grizzled appearance? And he doesn't have the real sharp definition between the ventral side and the lateral side. It just kind of blends in a little brownish colored. Same thing here. Compare him to this guy. Compare, and that's another paramiscus. Compare this guy to this guy. Right. Rodents are hard, and we're just touching the, just barely brushing the surface. There's a lot of rodents. Okay, um, a native large carnivore here, Canis latrain. Think about Canis, the Canids, canine. Uh, dogs, right? Canis uh, familiaris is the domestic dog. Canis lupus is the gray wolf. Canis rufus is the red wolf. Canis latrans is the uh, coyote. And they're all in hybridize. Uh, all hybridized. They're all in the same genus. Um, people will tell you that these in, or, are invasive. If you look at the native range of coyotes, they were out west and then they spread east in historical times. There's some evidence that they actually have some wolf genes in them, that they came from the west up through like Canada and the northeast and then spread down to the southeast. If you look at western coyotes, they're much, much smaller than the eastern coyotes. It's a big 80, 80 pound animal. But I don't think, for, as for identification, there's really nothing you can confuse this. Maybe with a gray fox, but not really. Vulpes, Vulpes. Amazing. Also native. Got one. Actually, Keith was telling me his grandfather shot it and he stuffed this. It's a good, a very good uh, skin there. Okay, what about this little guy here? It's like a cat fox. Gray fox, Uri Sion Cinerio Argentius. Look at these guys, very pretty. A lot of people don't really even know that we have two native foxes. Very common. I've seen a lot of these. In the I've seen more of these than I have red foxes. Considerably smaller. Um, this is a red fox or gray fox here. They do have some of the same red. But there's also a lot of gray on their face. Uh, they're climbers, they're a mess in trees. Uh, they're native. Carnivore. Carnivora is the order. And then Ursus Americanus, American black bear. Um, becoming much, much more. We tend to think of these these animals as becoming predators, becoming more rare. But these this species made a big comeback in Georgia. There was a time when they were not found really in the Piedmont, like around here. You would never see bears. I've seen them on campus. I've seen them right on the back of this uh, hillside right here. Bears. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> My dad set up cameras uh, last year. On this town, it was a bite really close close. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Up in Phoenix? Yeah. Yeah. And is that is that notable for, for there? Uh, no. Actually, we have never seen a bear okay. on property. And was, we had this tree stand and it went missing, so we set up cameras. The whole see, tree stand? Yeah, to see if somebody took it. And somebody did take the tree stand, but <laughs> we just saw a black bear okay. come up to the camera. Huh. There's a lot in Helen. Yep, there are places in the um, there are places in the mountains where there are more bears than there are deer. Yeah, my dad said we're gonna miss it. Ah, uh, I don't have the pictures, but someplace. Yeah, dang it. 
I've got a picture of a, of a video of them, of a, a black bear at Dr. Flint's, and it like walks right over to the camera. You can see a, a spider on its face. It gets so close. Cool, very cool animals. Procyon. Otor. Trash panda. Trash panda. Hmm. Whenever you see like people that have them for pets or whatever, they're all these are so fat. Yeah. Like they're like lots. Yeah. That's what I can't decide if a squirrel or a raccoon. Oh. I think a raccoon would be kind yeah. of cool. I don't have a raccoon personally. Yeah. He came real close last year and a friend of mine. And he's in the sheriff's department, so I kind of felt it's definitely illegal. But yeah. you know, if it's given to you by a sheriff, then it's kind of like, who's going to arrest you, right? Yeah. The sheriff just gave it to you. <laughs> um, but the problem is they're long lived, they're pretty long lived animals. And, um, you know, it's kind of like, <laughs> what happens when the, the, the seven year old gets tired of a raccoon or something? All right, your pigtails. Huh? All right, your pigtails. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They do not take no for an answer very well. Um, but they, they also can get rabies. Um, Pretty easily. A lot of these animals go through cycles uh, where they're common and then they're not common. And, um, I think it has a lot of that has to do with rabies. Um, also, one animal that people sort of forget lives here. This is this uh, skin over here. You see them a couple times. They're big. You see the with a tail. I mean, it's not like it can be this big no problem. Um, they definitely live on Dr. Flint. I wouldn't be surprised if they lived on campus in Morse Mill Creek, but they're just very, very difficult to see. Very difficult to see. They're peculiar little things. They're really cool. They're yeah, just they are. Um, they eat a lot of fish, mussels, super dense fur. Um, yeah, I mean, what can you say about them? Aren't they the ones that like they'll be in the water and they'll like use their stomach as like a tray or something when they eat? Those are uh, sea otters. Sea otters. Yeah. But river otters do the um in the in they'll build slides <laughs> and just slide down the um, muddy banks or particularly in the snow. Um, yeah, river otters. They're so fun. They're big, and when you look at their skull, you realize like they're. They're chunky, beefy animals. Okay, I guess closest thing you could confuse them with. These are all in the family Mustelidae. Um, Mustela, this is Mustela Renata. The long tailed weasel. Um, you get those at Dr. Frank's too. And my, the game camera that we put in the buckets. Um, white, black, long tail with a black tip. Um, Big, huge ears. Um, just a long weasel like body. That's the only weasel we have. Other places, there's short tailed weasels and ermines and long tailed weasels. Here, we just have the long tailed weasel. They're a much more northerly species. <clears throat> See a weasel without the white belly and um, I mean, I guess you could possibly consider the weasel the river otter, but face is longer, not so broad, much smaller. Beaks are like this big. They're they're fairly um, common up in the woods too. Beaks. They like long creeks, and um, definitely a, an aquatic. Not fully aquatic, but they like they like it around the water. I think Mustela bison bison. I saw a video. I mean, there's actually a movie or a cartoon movie about it's either a measle or a weasel or a mink. Okay. They were fighting like. Mink. You know oh no, mongoose. That's mongoose. Mongoose, yep. And that's a um, I don't know. I don't think a mongoose is a is a mustelid. So mustelidae is this family. They're hilarious. Mustelidae. We'll go to. Wikipedia, and it will tell us. Oh wait, it, they probably are then, because honey badgers are in this too. They don't do this. Yeah. So look at all the subfamilies in this. Okay, 
Yeah, badgers too. Wow, weaver, American badger, um, ferret badgers, martins, a wolverine. So, what's a what martin look like? Oh, martins are real cruel. Um, let's see. Martis, Martis. This is pine martin. They they look like a big weasel. Oh. This is northern. We again we have those in where I grew up. Another real cool one is this the Fisher. They specialize on eating porcupines. I had you guys some porcupine quills. I was bringing them back. I stopped and picked each one of you guys some porcupine quills, and I left them in New York. Let's see if my brother will um, will send them to me though. They're big. Aren't porcupine quills? Are they like? Don't they have like a hook in them so you mm -hmm. can't just pull them out? Yes. Yep. It's like a mini bear. It does. Yeah, yeah. They're like a they're like a mid-sized wolverine. Really cool. It's all, it's always the cute ones that are deadly. Yeah. Yeah, you know that's a good. Put your face down here. That's not a that's not a fisher. I'm sorry. I don't know what the hell that is, but yeah. So this this family Mustelidae, very cool animal, to be sure. Um, let's see what's that. Yeah, not a mink. Still never ascertained what a, a mongoose is. I don't. I don't think they're they're they are Mustelids though. Bullcat. Yeah, bullcat. Striped skunk. So cool. Mephitis, mephitis. We do have two species of skunks. Well, that should be easy. Hmm? Is it the name should be easy. Yeah. Oh, my fittest, my fittest. Yeah. If you can remember, well, if you forget the first part, you forget the second part. No, no <laughs> um, we, we also have a really small skunk that's like this big called the spotted skunk. And if you can find one of those, you are in luck because they're very, very rare these days. I haven't, no, no. Um, I've come close many times. Yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, look at these little guys. Um, kind of a mm, enigmatic animal. They, they should be here. Uh, and they're in the mountains, they're in the coastal plain, they're in Florida, they're in all around. But I have never seen a flood stone. All the times I've set up cameras. There's a huge push to find the remaining population. And it's unclear why this animal would disappear when the other mustelids, like striped skunk, are not common, but you see them. Um, I've seen them at Dr. Frank's. But spotted skunk, spatoli is the genus. But you don't need to know that one for the lecture or the lab. And then. Lynx Rufus. Very cool animal, actually. The thing right there can jump so quick. You know, well, had, we have a box stand on the property, mm -hmm. and it just, it, we have one that lives under a, a box stand? Yep. You ever heard of one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds like I, that. Actually, this is a pity, but I have to get. A friend of mine shot this thing with like a beer rifle, obviously. Uh, it uh, but the whole face is on here and the claws and everything. It's another thing I ran out of time. Yo, he um, smoked that. Yeah, he shot right in the neck. Almost 50 yards away. <laughs> Like a 30 out six or something. Mm -hmm. So, it, and he he's immediately anybody that I know. I mean, I know a lot of people who kill a lot of animals, fortunately or unfortunately. Everybody that's ever shot one of these is like, why did I do that? Yeah. Look at this thing. They they are so damn cool. And when you when you can hold one in your hands, it's just like this weird gangly animal, really long legs. Um, and just people just. There's no right to go and shoot one. You can't eat it. And once you kill, shoot it like that, you can't do anything with it. 
So Larry gave it to me to make a specimen with, but it's a lot of work. No, I, I haven't. It kind of raised some kind of blood curdling, huh? Yeah, it's kind of like a woman. Yeah. Oh, I... <laughs> um, and then white tail deer. You're probably going to run down and find one right now. There's, there's one right over. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so, those are the mammals. I would say probably the ones that you may run into difficulty with are the rodents, wood rat, nora rat, white footed mouse, house mouse. Um, but other than that, I mean, just flashcards and look at this, memorize the, those names. Just my other that's you. Okay. Yep. Um, so that's the last of the material that you're going to need to know for class. <laughs> and here it is, uh, just remember. So I'm going to try to think about what we want to do with our remaining lab time. Um, we may do some. We may do some dissections. We might um, go out in the field. Um, but we like to find some up for birds. The late this time of year is pretty good for a lot of waterfowl migrating through. Um, I'm not really honestly quite certain what we'll do, but um, but I think that's that's meant to be a encouraging words that they're not going to keep piling on stuff that you need to know for the second lab. Yeah. So just focus on when is the next lab practical. We'll make it that we'll, um, we'll make it the very last day of class. So that's twenty fourth, I think. You say the yeah Tuesday the twenty fourth. Then three weeks from today. One, two, three weeks. Yeah. So that should be a good good grade for us. But if you don't spend time with those scientific things, it will not be. Right. Um, power. Tough to you. <laughs> okay. I think so. Yes, please. I encourage it because that's how you learn. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> yeah, it was called Ricky Picky Tabby. Oh, yeah, that's an old um, yeah, story. Yeah, they can watch the movie when I was young. Okay. Say, um, Who's the guy that wrote that? Which ticket have you? Yeah, very famous. Oh, you mentioned the um the wiring that we're doing. When is 